Whenever I stream, there's a lot of people that are grinding for the Soviet mediums, and they have the choice between the T-62A and the Object 140. Both of these vehicles are very, very dangerous, but to the unsuspecting player, they will look at the statistics of the 62A, and they will look at the stats of the 140, and they'll be like, wait a second, why would I grind the T-62A when the Object 140 has much more damage per minute at 3,800 versus the 3,500 that the 62A has? And I can definitely understand that viewpoint, but obviously there's more than just meets the eye. When it comes to the 62A, this vehicle features much better turret armor, much better upper plate armor, and the vehicle hits harder for its damage per shot. I would definitely say for any beginner out there, if you're grinding for Soviet mediums, get the 62A first. I wouldn't even recommend to get the 140. Save your time, save your free XP for another tier 10. Why? Well, probably because the Object 140 is the hardest tier 10 to drive in the game currently. Like, yeah, the vehicle has crazy good accuracy, it's got really good DPM, and it's got a a lot of mobility paired with some of the best camo values for a medium. The issue arrives with the fact that it has literally no armor. The turret is awful. You can pen the turret at just about any angle. I mean, sure, it might get a troll bounce here and there, but heck, the Balshatillon gets troll bounces here and there. So, yeah, you're not going to get many bounces on the 140. The only spot that it still gets bounces is the hull is angled. It's kind of like the Skoda T-56, where if you don't know where to aim, you might bounce the side armor. But that's it. Nowhere else are you going to struggle. The upper plate's easy. Uh, everything about the 140 is pretty dang poor. When you pair that with only 6 degrees of gun depression, it's a rather tricky vehicle to do well in. Now, if you play it properly, with a 4.7 second reload for 310 damage per shot, I mean, this can be one of the deadliest tanks in the game. You can easily use that mobility, get behind your opponents, and just farm them to death especially with the crazy HE Alpha this vehicle does have a 420. But again, you have to be incredibly cautious on what you're doing. Now we have a T-22 medium on our side, and I'm not too worried about the T-22 per se. I'm more worried about the other vehicles they have on their team. Uh, we can see two tanks have gone town, three tanks have gone town. I'm just waiting here. I don't know if that T-22 is still spotting me or not. Um, there's only really one way to find out. Oh, yeah, we are being spotted. Interesting. All right, well, we actually have support from an FE2 and 5B183. And here's my thought process. If I go wide, we can push this T22. I'm not seeing anybody else, and the T22 is probably going to shoot at my 183. So, ooh, never mind. I lied. That is death. All right, let's aim it on the 50B. We got one shell into his vehicle right there. We're going to put on our adrenaline, and I'm just going to go for it. This might be a bit of a risky maneuver. You know what, actually? If the T-22 is going to fight us, let's just fight the T-22. You can actually see we got a troll bounce right there on our hull. Now we're just going to wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. T-22 does pen us with that shot. We're going to pen him again. There you go. You'll notice we have an AFK AMX-30. Somehow the T-22 missed me, and while the 50B did kill my teammate... That's not too much of a problem, as we finish off the T-22, and now we're going to head straight over towards the enemy AMX-50B. This is obviously, again, where that DPM is hopefully going to allow us to just absolutely rip into this poor player. We got one shell, we get a nice HE for 420, now we're going to back on up, we get another HE into his vehicle, and even though that is an autoloader who's going to get two shells out, guess what? We still have enough of our DPM that we are able to clear him. Let's just pray that this 30B is still AFK. Or not the 30B, but you know what I mean. He is indeed. We're going to start farming him. Sometimes these players come back when you shoot them and they turn into like bots or something, but we're going to try and take advantage of this while we can. I'm not going to put myself in a position where he can do anything to me. But I mean, do you see this DPM? It's kind of crazy. This is where the 140 just is a little stupid. So, obviously, the AMX is gone now. They still have a full health VK-72, which is definitely a threat, but not something I'm personally all too worried about. We got the side of the VK. We're going to get one shell into his vehicle right there. We've got our adrenaline on. We're going to have two shells into his tank now. we still got our adrenaline going, and that is three and the kill. So, yeah, when this tank pops off, it pops hard. 5,700 damage dealt plus a fire on that AMX-30. Add all that together, we're probably looking upwards of about 6,000 damage, and there you go, 6,125. So, I mean, that was a little insane. We didn't even ace it, which is a weird, weird uh, fact. I, I don't even know how we didn't ace it. We got 1,500 base XP, but I guess 
I guess there's a lot of people liking the 140 right now. Either way, I mean, that was a crazy game. And even though we did farm an AFK, the rest of the battle really showed the 140's capabilities. We HE'd the 50B to a point where he could not kill us. We killed the T-22. I, I had the option of either rushing the 50B, HE'ing him to death from the rear while he clipped my 183, or killing the T-22 and then dealing with the 50B. And I definitely think going for the T-22 is the smarter decision there. That tank has a lot more DPM than the 50B. It's got obviously more armor and it's a tank that is going to be a lot harder to deal with if i ignore because he's going to be shooting me the whole time so i'd much rather kill the t22 i could have always left as well that 50b was just never much of a threat what we're going to do here is obviously try and fight their mediums but they do have a caro we have a caro as well but man we got to trust our caro more than theirs that's the big important thing now, you'll notice, again, the mobility on this tank allows us to just easily speed right up onto 60 kilometers per hour. I love the mobility. It's super, super nice, and it makes the tank feel incredibly flexible. The situation where the 140 really falls apart is up against haul-down, mediums, autoloaders, anything that can use gun depression. Like, for example, the enemy Caro, I can shoot the dude for 310, and every single time I try to shoot him, he can hit me back for 380. And even if I do beat him in the end... I'm gonna absolutely kill myself to do it. So it's just not worth it in those types of scenarios. So you gotta be very cautious when driving a vehicle like this. The only thing I'm worried about here, is something rolling up behind me. But we'll find out. We have the majority of our team making their way over to this flank. I'm just seeing if this Yag spots anybody on the hill over here. We are running refined gun. And as you'll notice, the 140 has an incredibly accurate gun as it is. So I'm just really hoping that somebody gets spotted on this hill. However, it appears that's not the case, which is weird. Nobody's been spotted anywhere else, except for this IS-4 in mid. Odd. Okay, well, I can't hit the IS-4. We see that the K-91 and E-100 are off to the side. We also have the E-4 making his way on up. We're gonna try and bonk the E-4. There you go, nice tracking shell. I'll take it, that's 312 damage. However... Of course, they have a camping T92E1 who shoots me for 650 with an almost max roll. How incredibly fun. Nothing you can really do about that, but it's just rather uh, irritating. Now, this is where I feel like a fish out of water in the 140. Because I can't push their camping Caro or their camping T92E1. They're just going to shoot me. I can't do anything on top of the hill because they have an E4. I don't have the turret armor. I don't have the armor in general. So, really, in this situation, there's only two options I have. It's to try and either deal with the IS-4 or the FE-2 and 5B-183. I don't know where the 183 is. Could be on the ridge line. I literally have zero clue. But we're going to see if I can get behind them here. We do have that 92 chilling in the open. And at this point, just going to try and get some shells into the rear of that 92. We got one bonk and two bonks. There you go. That's a pretty solid chunk of his HP already stripped away. There you go. Three bonks. That is... Uh, Obviously, almost all of his vehicle gone. This is, again, where the 140 does feel quite insane. Like, the DPM on this vehicle, it's just, it's ridiculous. We turned that 140 into literally nothing in a moment. Now, is the IS-4 still over here? That's a question I personally have no, he's not. As we can see, the IS-4 has maneuvered to other areas. We have the Caro on the side. We're going to push right on that Caro. There's one shell into his vehicle for 307. Caro gets bonked again. We're going to bonk him ourselves for another 316. And that player is obviously not enjoying our company all too much. We have the side of the 100. We get one shell into his vehicle. And we're going to reload. Get a second. Oh, never mind. Then the Caro also pens us, which is even more interesting to be completely real. Okay. Uh, I'm not really sure what to say about the gun right now of this vehicle. However, this Caro obviously thinks he's more skilled than he is. And we get the clear on him. All right, let's uh, let's get a tracking shell to the 183. That spins him out, causing him to miss the shot on me, which allows us to finish him off. Tracking your opponents is probably one of the most important things you can do in the game because it stops them from being able to aim in on you. It spun that 183 just enough to make him miss. So even though their team had some camping vehicles that we had a very hard time dealing with frontally, we were able to use our brains, flank to the side, still deal 3,000 damage, and even assist 2,000, which means we did over 5,000 combined. That was a really solid game, and we actually got a lot of XP close to the previous game. So this is the 140. I mean, it's an amazing tank, and you can have capabilities that allow you to deal crazy damage, but you need to be skilled enough to use it. And if you're not, this is a vehicle that you should leave in the garage and not touch. I would much rather recommend to play something like a 907, a T62A, or heck, even go for mediums like the 121, which are incredibly underrated 
at least in my opinion. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.